uh, in some Bollywood films, they're Pakistanis. Anyone who's playing a Pakistani says things like "adab." Yes. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't talk like that. As artists in Pakistan, we're so starved for such kind of content that these little backlashes really don't, you know, set us back. Uh-huh. I just hope women watch us. I hope women see us in this. in these out there characters hello sarwat and hello meher uh, thank you for joining us today thank you so lovely to be you. here so i saw the trailer of katil hasina ke naam and it looks uh, terrific and it looks recklessly wild and every anthology has a thematic connection right uh, so tell us a bit about your stories and how they make uh, how they are part of one world since all these films and web series and uh, other narratives are based uh, around men and they're also written by men for men they're mostly showing women uh, in a light where um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of cruelty happening to them they are subjugated they are um, subservient and it's basically a reflection of how males view females so what i think is missing and has been missing for the longest time in uh the cinema around the subcontinent is that they've never raised any red flags with or dealt with the repercussions of how women are treated in society as a result of men you know being cruel and subjugating women so i think this particular show deals with the repercussions of how women have been treated so far and my character in particular is her name's anarkali and she's a feisty young woman who has been wronged since childhood and finally in the course of this web series she decides to take a stand for herself So I also know that this is the second time that you guys are working with each other, and I think I read an interview where uh, Meher you said uh, that uh, you were uh, starstruck by Sarwat when you first got to know that we were working together. Uh, so how is it working with each other the second time? I'm still starstruck by her. I am absolutely <laughs> overtaken by her beauty. She gleams. <laughs> she gleams whenever she walks into a room, and it's like. I can't take this much light, <laughs> really like glowing at all times, and I, I, that's just not only what I think. That's what everyone has to say about her. She's got this infectious energy, and a very kind, beautiful, empathic, empathetic soul, uh, where she's just always going the extra mile for everyone, everyone. and working with her is an absolute learning experience and i know that because she's also someone who's so open to learning new things despite having worked uh for so long it's so oh, a pleasure working with her banu virtual hug right now <laughs> oh i could say the same i think uh, banu had this energy for injurels um um she had this energy that she brought to the character and i think nobody in this entire industry could pull off that character like she did and uh, literally like khoon pasina you know she she takes it on like that and even in this uh, as an arkali uh, in katil hasina i know that physically she's taken so much on herself it's lovely i always love working with bano i think uh, uh, we have this bond um after chorels uh, all four of us the four chorels uh, we have this bond which is very uh, it's a uh, it's a virtual bond it's a it's a bond and we described in words yes yeah, in yeah even if we don't meet each other over the years the minute we hang out together it's like you know we just pick it up from there Uh, since we were talking about chorels uh, you know when feminist uh, stories are uh, sh- uh, portrayed on screen they often come with a male narrative uh, or they are disguised into male stories but i think chorels really um, broke that uh, and it showed uh, stories of women 
being wronged or women being pushed to their boundaries in a very interesting and real way. And I see reflections of that in Katil Hasi now, Kinam too. And this time around, it's being done by a woman, like a woman a filmmaker. So um, I wanted to know from both of you. So what a uh, difference uh, is there in the treatment of the stories when it is done by a man and a woman? Not to say that Chudas is great. I think um, uh, what Asim actually wrote was very, very well researched and he had taken a lot of women's stories into account while even crafting the narrative for Chudas. And he was very careful about um, making sure that none of the experiences uh, were far from reality. I mean, I'm sure these thoughts came into his mind too, that he's a man writing uh, stories centered around women. Uh, and he thought about that very much, which is why he made sure that he didn't make a mistake of that sort. Because, um, But Minu, on the other hand, is, I think the way she, uh, her approach is very, very different to Asim. Asim, um, he, he's not very experimental in his approach. I mean, he, he knows exactly what he wants. While Minu is sort of, she's, she gets us to perform to the best of our abilities. And I feel like we were just as involved in crafting the scenes as she was. So she really gave us that, um, that leeway yes. to sort of, yeah. that space to create with her. It's a, it's a very experimental approach, but it, at the same time, it's very, very fulfilling because I feel like we had, uh, we had a say. I also feel that um, obviously because Minu is a woman, <clears throat> her, um, uh, her emotional uh, sensibilities uh, to looking at things uh, is, is a little uh, obviously different from uh, our sense. And I felt that she was able to maneuver our craft of acting through an emotional side. Or at least for me, I felt like she would say something to me which was completely opposite to what she wanted. And then somehow I would get her half sentences and we'd get there because the emotion was very real and she would tap into that emotion. Also, like after Chudels, the kind of uh, response that Chudels got, which was immensely overwhelming, but it also had its share of uh, turbulent backlash. But it hasn't been all that long. And when you get these kind of reactions, does it have an influence on the kind of uh, roles that you choose to portray? Does it hold you back? You see, uh, I think, Ashwarya, we're so, as, as artists in Pakistan, we're so starved for such kind of content that these little backlashes really don't, you know, set us back. And they don't make us afraid of, oh, we're going to lose viewerships and fans and stuff like that. Because, I mean, uh, I think any artist would die to do a script like Jurez or would die to do a script like Kathin. So we are very lucky, in fact, uh, uh, that we are being offered such roles and such roles are being written. Um, as far as the backlash for Chudels, we actually thought that there'll be 80% hatred and 20% love. While it was just the opposite, there was 80% love and 20% hatred is fine. Because as artists, I think, uh, uh, and Chudels, I think now that we've done Chudels and people have seen Chudels, now they know that ye crazy girl and So they expect it. I think Chudels also kind of set up a new career trajectory for us. It's the beginning yeah. of uh, us seeing ourselves in a completely different light as opposed to what we used to do a few years ago in terms of our work and the way we uh, projected ourselves. There were, wasn't much choice, like Sarvat said. We did not have a choice at all, in fact. Now that we've done this, I feel like all our opinions and what we are and who we are, our, our image has sort of aligned with this, um, this um, new revolutionary idea that you know women-centric narratives will be coming to the fore and we'll be the pioneers of that movement. 
so i think that kind of also set us up for um getting characters like anarkali and uh, you know getting cast in a show like katil hasina because you know i feel like chudas was the beginning of something when i think this is something that we've been waiting for our entire life and to be able to do characters where you know women are strong and empowered and just taking fate in, into their own hands is honestly a blessing because there aren't many characters being written like this that there are a lot of people who enjoy bollywood films in pakistan and uh, india's portrayal of um, pakistani characters or pakistani women more often than not has been uh, dipped in stereotypes so what's your take on that and do you think it's changing in terms of bollywood's representation or even how world cinema treats pakistani characters i think uh, there is a, a quite a misrepresentation uh, as far as pakistani characters are concerned uh, uh, bollywood or globally uh, so i think uh, this uh, you know having a product like chudas or katil hasina uh, makes people realize and i hope that they realize that uh, there is so much more to pakistan and its talent uh, than the stereotypical quite monotonous understanding of what pakistan is all about and um, i think uh, slowly and gradually people are realizing uh, the kind of products that are coming out of pakistan is a, is the true representation of our talents and you know their prediction or their perce- their way of perceiving pakistani uh, 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 you know artist is a very sub- subjective sort of a thing it's very um it's their opinion it's in their opinion that's not the truth i think the power of social think. media is also such the power of social media is such that every time uh, there's a film uh, in bollywood or hollywood for that matter where pakistanis are misrepresented which is often it happens a lot more than it should at the moment uh, i think there's a huge backlash that is followed by it and people do tend to call them out for misrepresenting mm. uh, a country a lot of people there are like far reaching consequences to us being misrepresented also like a lot of people whenever i go to the us or any other country think that pakistan is in the middle east and it's like a desert and dry and there's only mm-hmm. people walking around wearing uh, arab clothing or hamams or mm-hmm. whatever and that's just completely untrue and i think these depictions and these perceptions are fueled by misrepresentations i wouldn't even say misrepresentations are completely false representations about pakistanis uh, how pakistanis talk like even in even now in indian films uh in some bollywood films there pakistanis anyone who's playing a pakistani says things like adab yeah. <laughs> no, we don't they don't talk like that <laughs> we we talk the way we talk is pretty similar to the way indian people talk Everybody, you know, practically yeah. the same people yeah so i think this 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 does prove quite toxic but there are a few celebrities uh, taking this issues up issue up like this ahmed is really trying to tackle how pakistanis yeah. are represented around the world and i think that shows like chudels and uh, anything that z5 is creating right now will really help alter the perception last uh, year or two uh, we have achieved so much of uh, diversity and fluidity in terms of watching content and cinema from everywhere i came in co- uh, contact with content from pakistan that i didn't uh, uh, have the access to before so peddled by uh, the expense the kind of expensive mediums that ott and streaming are art has i think art has truly been able to transcend borders uh, but in the past when pakistani artists or actors have um, uh, have been a part of indian cinema it didn't uh, go down the best uh, path so but do you think now is the time where collaboration between our nations could be more viable i think collaboration is uh, imminent at this point i absolutely agree with banu i think it's a very uh, 
it's a very important time in uh, the industries, especially after COVID, that we go beyond these, uh, you know, minute little mindsets and uh, take a full take full advantage of what art can actually do for the country, for the for the people, for for the sake of art, for the sake of uh, you know, becoming one and, and looking at the world at, at, as a big, larger picture, uh, rather than having personal agendas uh, make, uh, make things difficult. I think uh, it's the 21st century and people globally are wanting to come together rather than bifurcate in small, uh, you know, mindsets. So I think uh, it's only with time uh, that they will realize and we all will realize that uh, these little hindrances only make us stronger life. And I think uh, with due time, when the time is right, it will all come together. We really shouldn't, uh, you know, feel that it's not happening or, or, oh, wow, you know, our stars were not welcomed after a certain time. Their time was then. And their time is going to come again. So no fret. As people are getting ready to watch the show, what do you hope that they take away from it? I hope they uh, see that Pakistan is full of uh, this varied sea of talent. And uh, we will keep bringing back some awesome work and awesome content because we're not done with it yet. I just hope women watch us. I hope women see us in this, in these out there characters and really sort of go into some kind of introspection and see that, you know, we're not all that men have made us out to be. And despite living in a patriarchal society dictated by men, we can still hold our own and there is space for all kinds of women in the world. And we're not going to be subservient for long and there is going to be a revolution. Okay, so thank you so much for taking the time out. It was absolutely great talking to you guys and all the best. Thank, thank you, you. Ashwarya, for having us.